fires Nate Goff. Nathan Goff, that kid is quite athletic. Let's see if he can have another incredible layout like he had a couple of weeks ago. Unbelievable. We're talking about the one against Austin where he was able, it was the highest bid I've ever seen a person get up to. Unfortunately, of course, he macked it right to the person <laughs> to score a goal, but it was still one of the most athletic things I have seen. It really was. Especially right in front of me here at Cardinal Gibbons. For Jacksonville, it looks like starting from the right side, Sam Catrone, Cole Sullivan, Bobby Lay, Jordan right, Huston, Andrew McKelvey, Dustin Travellini, and Michael Fairley. Fairley, Central Florida player, very big, very tall. Look for him to have a good night as well. And here's the pull from Justin Allen, and we are underway. The AUDL, Jacksonville versus Raleigh. Short pull here from Allen. Lands in, though. I thought it was going to go out, honestly, but this, these skills are so wide that just managed to stay in. There's a deep cut. Here's our premier matchup between Bobby Lay and Danny Schmidt. And Cole Sullivan with the disc with Evan Howey on him. Evan Howey, no stranger to Cole Sullivan as he was playing for Charlotte last year. Ooh, quick drop there by Huston. Matsuka's going to pick it up and he's looking at Allen. Allen gets it, looks at Schmidt. He's going to go back to Matsuka in the middle of the field. Matsuka to Howey. They've got a lot of space in the middle of the field right now. A little empty of cuts. Howie looking, ooh, very high release over Cole Sullivan to Matsuka. Matsuka weighing his options, dumps it to Howie, swings it over to Allen. Allen waiting for Danny Schmidt to get open, isn't finding it, dumps it to Matsuka. Matsuka breaks the mark, throws it to Schmidt, looking to bump it, swings it instead. They're really taking their times with these throws, making sure they're all 100%. And, uh, really good offense here to start the game by the Rally Flyers. Brad Matsuka playing some ticky-tacky offense here with Shane Sisko. Matsuka every, seeming to be every other. I think there's a contact call downfield. Ten-yard penalty to the Rally Flyers. Looks like it was fairly on David Richardson. That's a fun matchup to watch. Matsuka tapping the disc back in, looking for the hammer. Ops to swing it. Ooh, just gets it from... Back to Matsuka, swings it to David Richardson, to Shane Sisko. Justin Allen with the first goal of the night. Shane Sisko with the assist. Looks like Jacksonville was calling for a travel there. I'm opted to believe that kind of looked like that, but you know what, if the ref's not gonna call it, it's a goal for the Raleigh Flyers. A quick break, Justin Allen scoring and, well, emphatically spiking it. That was quite the spike for the very first goal of the game. It was pretty, uh, pretty good defensive O by the Raleigh Flyers. They really took their time That's and uh, found their cuts, and One. they were able to get a swing across the field and just punch it into the end zone there. Two. Coming out on Raleigh Flyers D line, Six. looks like Matsuka is saying. Josh Hartzog looking to pull. Got Jeff Norgren, Micah Hood, Matt Bode, Mike Pannoni, and Noah Saul. Rare offense, or excuse me, rare defensive point for Noah Saul. Usually he's on that O line. That's so stellar, but it looks like he's on the D line tonight, or at least for this point, at least. Hartzog with the pull and a typical Josh Hartzog end zone to end zone pull. That was quite the rip, and now the wind is starting to pick up a little bit behind the Flyers' backs. Let's see if Jacksonville can maintain their throws and get down the field. That's Bobby Lay finding Sam Catrone, who uh, apparently was not being guarded at that point. It's all good. He's got a person now. It's Mike Pannoni. Bobby Lay getting covered by Matsuka. Swings it over to Catrone. Catrone finding the open receiver in Chris LaRock, the former Raleigh Flyer. He played on the team last year. Looks like he opted to play back for Jacksonville this year. Lay with the disc again. Pannoni tracking Catrone. Catrone able to run. Throws a nice high release over the head. Finding LaRock. LaRock with the disc back to Fairley. Being guarded by Micah Hood. Ooh, Ooh, nice throw right there. Splitting right past Matsuka. Ooh. Incredible layout by Noah Saul. He almost gets the D. And again, another goal. goal. Swinging it across the field and punching it in the end zone right there. Just a reminder that the AUDL field is 53 right, yards man, wide. And offense. you got to really use that. That's 13 yards wider than a normal a, uh, excuse me, USA youth field. 
you can swing it across the whole field and just like they did right there they started at their own 40 yard line and they swung it all the way to the goal yep that's incredible yeah. that's efficient yeah. offense right there it really is and that was really good for the, the cannons they needed that goal in order to keep up in the game jacksonville's a very disciplined team so when they make undisciplined errors like drops like they saw in that first point Raleigh's gonna take advantage of that you know yeah. Raleigh's not gonna yeah. you know they're gonna test him but maybe not as early as they as they would hope so if they get an opportunity on an unforced error look for Raleigh to be clinical now stepping onto the field for the first time is the human highlight reel himself Jakeem Polk let's see if he announced himself here last year playing with the Charlotte Express a team that Daniel Shopper and I both played for had the privilege of playing for and he, he announces presence on the AUDL field here. Let's see if he can make a similar presence known today. Noah Saul with the disc swings it. Casey, Casey with the disc is looking. Swings it to Dieter. Dieter takes his time, throws it to Nutt. Nutt's got it on the sideline, looking at Saul. Takes his time, takes his time, he throws it to Snoke up the line. Oh, what a catch by Snoke, almost with the Lay out there as Fairfax catches it low. Snoke again swings it way across the field to a diving Ooh. Helton who just barely misses the grab. That's very unlike Snoke right there to miss a wide open target. And a long shot. Here it comes. Looking for Jock. Jock boxing out Snoke. Yes, sir. Reed. Oh, Jakeem Polk. Oh, and Snoke is down. Hope he's okay. Looks like the goal, but I think. Snoke was hit in the face on his way. Hopefully he's all gonna be all right. It is a goal that for the Jacksonville goal. Cannons, tying the, or giving them the lead in another break here early in the game. But Dave Snoke is down. Not really sure what happened there. I think when ja Jakeem went up to grab the disc, he actually might have hit him in the face. Yeah, he might have hit him with his elbow. Maybe uh, in the nose, perhaps? It was hard to tell from this angle, but it seemed like it could have been the elbow to the face. Hopefully Snoke's going to be okay. We're going to step away until he does. All right, Dave Snoke was able to walk off under his own power there, so that's good to see. But Jacksonville, with their break back, now leading 2-1. to one. Score is now on serve again. And here's a pull from Dustin Travellini. Also on the field is the six foot seven behemoth Misha Freestadter. He will be guarding Jonathan Nevercutt all day long. Yeah, he's really hoping to use his length to make it hard for Nutt to throw. But I have a feeling it's not going to do anything. Goose Helton finding Dieter to Nethercutt. Nethercutt taking the shot. Ooh, and Terrence Mitchell stealing that one out of the air. I don't think that was actually who he was throwing to. I don't think it was. And then Mitchell with a great break throw. And that will put the Flyers right back up 2-2. Two to two. Goal, Jacob Fairfax assists to Terrence Mitchell. Jacob Fairfax doing what he does best. Score goals, drops the disc, and the very... Antithesis sure like of Justin Allen. Justin, Justin Allen spikes the disc, Jacob Fairfax just drops it. He acts like he's been there before. The 
Flyers sending out their defensive line of Justin Allen, Shane Sisko, Brett Matsuka, Danny Schmidt. Looks like Evan Howie, David Richardson, and Nathan Goff are going to close off that line. Let's get that break back. Justin Flyers. Allen with, of course, the uh, unconventional flick pull. Going slightly upwind, so maybe this will affect the flick pull a little bit, but he put his whole arm into that one. That My was goodness. A rip. What a shot there from Allen. Sullivan with the disc, finding Lay. Not fairly running out in the middle of the field. Richardson picks him up. Goff tracking Catrone. Sullivan with the disc, but swings it immediately back to Lay. Lay looking for the shot. Here it is. He's testing David Richardson. Richardson pushing fairly out of the way. Oh, wow. A lot of contact there. A lot of body contact. Great Refs are swing. No. Wow. They're talking about it. But those are just two big men. They're like 6'3", 220 to 230 pounds each. So a lot of body contact there. No call. Matsuka picking up the disc. And that's what we were talking about earlier in the game with that physicality. You know, that was a perfect example of it right there. The Flyers using their physicality, and it's a little bit more physical than the Canons. Able to get that D. Flyers working on the disc up very quickly. Goff taking a shot here. Testing Catrone. Can Howie make a play? Yes, oh! he can. And unfortunately, Catrone, as tall as he is, just misread the jump. Kevin Howie, amazing score. Make off. Thankful that he came down with the, that one. Great assist. And that'll be another up. break for the Flyers. 3-2 to two now. Seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter. We've had some exciting plays so far. We really have. And this is kind what of what we expected Kevin from the Howie. Cannons and the Flyers. We'll have to see it continue. This rate, we might run out of buckets. Looks like the Flyers are going to change up their D line a little bit. Looks like we've got Mike Pannoni, Noah Saul, Micah Hood. Nathan Goff is going to stay on the field. Danny Schmidt. Let's turn the hang time on this pool, and good old fans. Jeff Nordgren. Team Noah. Wolf himself. <laughs> Let's see if we can see a panded Jeff Nordgren layout. One. Of we both Two, know a little bit both that with that three, last year with Charlotte. Hey, Shoffler. Yes, sir. Noah Saul with the pull, and that was quite the rip. Hartzog down there first. Lay back to Sullivan, and you know what? He didn't like it. Send it right back. It's like we're watching semi-pro right now. Bobby Lay with the disc. Turned the disc over on that huck to Fairley. It wasn't really his fault. D. Rich made it really hard for Fairley to even try to get that. Zog pressuring the mark here. Lay looking for it, finds McKelvey instead, back to Lay, Zog sealing. Flyers are doing a really good job right now of keeping, and just as I say that, they're able to get it off the sideline, but we'll have to see if they can actually get it up the field a little bit. Catrone with the disc now, being guarded by Zog. It's a really good junk zone right here by the Flyers. They're really keeping it on the sideline. They're not letting them get around, but Bobby Lay just steps around Hartzog. Finds McKelvey over to Sullivan. Looks like they've broken through and they're now in a man. Disc is in Huston's hands now, being guarded by Saul. Huston throws. Catron able to stab at it. Trying to rip it back to Lay, but unable to do so. Oh, Nakoff almost with the layout. Bobby Lay able to stab that one. He's he pointing. Points. Like there's going to be a, a foul Contact on the Flyers. Flyers. Well, Mike Pannoni, he might not be as big as Cole Sullivan, but he did throw him to the ground there. So, 10 yard penalty for that. Lay shoots it to Sullivan. Sullivan in the middle of the field, guarded by Pannoni. He shoots a nice flick to the other side of the field. Finding Huston. Huston being guarded by Saul. Back to Sullivan being guarded by Pannoni. Inside break. Finding McKelvey, flies it over to Hughes. Oh, and Huston can't come down with it. Noah Saul taking the shot. He's got Mike Pannoni, and yeah, Coe Sullivan's never going to catch him. And with ease, Mike Pannoni just runs it down. Good gracious, he turned on the afterburners, and that man was gone. A little contact there from Sullivan. Zog finding Norgren, who shoots it to Micah Hood. Another break for the Raleigh Flyers. Just unbelievable there from the Flyers. Noah Saul from his goal line throws it about 70 yards. 
And Mike Pannoni just ran past Sullivan. It, I know Pannoni's fast, but man, he makes a lot of really fast guys look not so fast. And he put his speed on display there, and Noah saw with an absolute rip from his own end zone. And Jeff Norgren with a nice floaty goal to Micah Hood. Little the App State connection right there. Little downwind, high release, push pass, something. I don't even know what it was, but it was, it was there. I think it I saw worked. him throw that last week in goal team. Three breaks in a row, Raleigh. Come on, let's stop those feet, fans. Three breaks in a row would be quite the accomplishment for the Flyers. The Canyons are going to see if they can get back in their offensive groove a little bit and try and hush this Flyers crowd. Justin Allen with the pull like another unconventional flick pull. That one a little bit outside in pulls over on itself and falls at about the 30 yard line. Bobby Lay with the disc and he is looking. Guarded by Nethercutt. Swings it over to Roney. Being guarded by Brett Matsuka. Sneaks it into Preshotter who's playing a rare offensive play. Remember he moved to the D line a couple weeks ago. It's weird to see not see his name on the goals list for the AUDL this year. It really is, but he's been a monster on that D line for Jacksonville this year, and really a really a game changer as he's being guarded by Bode right now. Takes a deep cut, but then cuts back under. He Broke wants those. The disc. He wants those in cuts, and Bode will let him get those in cuts. Oh boy! Look at the disc. He's looking deep. Cuts back under. Doing a nice break throw. To Finds Huston. Huston able to stab that one. Tara Laney are able to drop back, allow Huston to break the double team, fakes the hammer. Big. Does he get it? I have no He idea. did catch it. Traveling. It looks like there's a travel. Stone is not dropping that disc. He was not pleased with that call. Justin Allen. Looks like the far judge actually came in and, and overruled it. Justin Allen adamant about it. Nut with the disc, and he has no mark right now as Bobby Lay comes to pick him up. Swings it to Matsuka. Matsuka looking downfield. Decides to throw a nice little scuba to David Richardson right there. And Richardson with no mark looking around. Throws a nice float. Right Shane Sisko who tracks it down. Now Mike Bode with the disc, and he's looking at nut. Swings it across the field to Matsuka, though. Matsuka there doesn't have no another swing. cut there, but he finally gets to Allen. Matt Bode going deep. Is he going to take the shot? Oh, of course he is. It's okay. It's a giant six-foot-seven monster. Let's see if Bode can come down with this. Yeah, no chance. Misha just uses his body there. Matt, Matt just laughing. He knew he didn't have a chance on that one. Oh, Shane Sisko. Coming strong. Ooh. Ooh, another drop, drop by the Cannons. This is very uncharacteristic for them. A very disciplined team, and they're just dropping Ooh, the. Oh, and what? I say that. And oh, my goodness. What a play by Matsuka to catch that dump throw by Cisco there. Richardson throws it. Oh, to a wide open, open nut. Cut. Yes. Wow. E. Bob. Wow. Great what a throw by, by Nethercut. Justin Allen very cheekily just drops the disc as he stares at the cannon sideline. Three breaks in a row, Flyers. Let's keep it up. What a great, great point there for the Flyers. The cannons, on the other hand, are dropping the disc. Uh, they need to start playing some frisbee like I know they can. That's the first time a, Flyers fans, not, sure you know, we had, the with all the, the scores quarter, so far, with the, the five the previous quarter, four the fourth, scores, they were scored by four different surprises. Raleigh Flyers, Flyers thrown by four different team. Raleigh Flyers. This is the first time that we've seen somebody repeat, and that's Justin Allen getting his second goal of the night. But all, uh, all the goals have been thrown by five different Raleigh Flyers. They're really spreading the wealth around tonight. It's great to see from the Flyers. All right, fans, On the flip side, if the Cannons want to stay in this game, they better start doing the fundamentals, throwing and catching. We were seeing a bad throw on the goal line. You know, Huston, he might not be the tallest guy, but you know what? You got to hit the guy in the chest. It's very true. As Micah Hood with a great pull, but it looks like it's going to sail just a little bit out of bounds. Hate to see that from the great white shark. He knows he's got to do better, but maybe it was a little bit of strategy as you see the Flyers walking down a little casually and the Cannons doing the same. Both teams looking a little tired here in the first quarter. Flyers operating in their Delta system, guarding the 
Third stack. Sullivan finding a very wide open Bobby Lay. And here's the matchup with Danny Schmidt. Lay breaks the mark. Ooh, that's an interesting little catch. Probably a travel. Back to Lay. Almost gets to D. Lay swings it all the way across the field to Sullivan. Sullivan is just looking, looking. He doesn't really have much. Waiting for the hammer. He's probably gonna, oh, he throws a scuba. Oh, and Noah Saul almost oh. gets the D. Fairly says that he was stripped. And I guess they're, they're gonna give it to him. It wow. looks, looks like they believe Michael Fairley there. I don't know. That looked like a really sketchy yeah, scuba by yeah. Sullivan. Fairly with the disc on the goal line. Throws it around. And that's a goal for the Jacksonville Cannons. They've, they've stopped the bleeding. It is now five to three. Goal, Jordan Huston. At the goal from Jordan Huston from Michael Fairley. They really needed that one, CJ. Five to three now. Doesn't look so bad. Six to two. That, that looks rough. But the, the Cannons are back in it, and we're going to have to see what happens next. Only 142 left in the first quarter. That's another interesting caveat here is it's only five to three these teams usually score a lot of points it's hungry grab some seems a little defensive so far the, the game has started off what i'm noticing about the flyers is that they're being patient as opposed to some games where they're just if you take the austin game where they went and just hucked the disc they, you talk about an earlier game against the cannons they were hucking it a lot I haven't seen that yet from the flyers Maybe that's something that they're trying to get away from. Maybe Mike D is seeing that they're not winning games effectively enough, and maybe that's where we see this type of clinical patience from the Flyers. Another cut with the disc. Opts not to throw it to Ben Dieter, but you know what? Ben Dieter just needed more time, more yards. There he is with the disc now. Inside to Fairfax. There's that matchup with Polk. Just keeps swinging the disc over to the side, finding Fair Mitchell. Opts not for Matt Bode, who might have been open. Jonathan Nethercutt just taunting with a hammer to the far side of the field finding Helton what a throw by my Nethercutt. goodness hammer from to Goose. you could see the power that he threw that hammer with. he put his whole body the into it and just ripped iPhone. it across the field and as you said earlier CJ that's almost 53 yards that he just threw that hammer across the field they had a good defender over there Bradley Singens who is one of the highest uh, D givers on this team for Jacksonville, yeah. and he even couldn't even get remotely near the area. Goose Helton scoring his first goal of the night. Nethercut's second assist, putting the Flyers up six to three. That was a pretty quick the score. They only took about 30 seconds. That was real quick. And I don't know. I guess Cannons are going to have to do a little bit better defense of. Uh, they they were playing really far off there, and you can see it as Nut took advantage of the wide open hole. I'm wondering if, and you know, because I've done a couple of these games so far, and just thinking about the teams that have come here: Atlanta, Jacksonville, Dallas, uh, DC, uh, Austin. These teams are coming. They, they usually start off kind of kind of like this, this lull in the first quarter. Sometimes the teams ramp it up and we see a, a better game. But if we don't start seeing some charisma from this Jacksonville team, we're in for a long game. Very true. And another interesting factor is that these teams do have to drive very far. So it's interesting when you think about having to drive seven hours and then play once you get off the bus. That's Ooh. a sketchy throw, but Lay's able to come down with it, and he's on his own goal line. There's 45 seconds left, so they're gonna have to get going. Goff pressuring Catron. Catron looking to move it off the sideline. Matsuka, great defense on Lay, but still, Catron's able to float that into Lay. Sullivan sneaks out of the backfield. Oh, and he thought about a rip. Rapaski finding McKelvey. McKelvey looking, getting that double team, finds Sullivan, 20 seconds left. Sullivan to Lay, and Lay, He's looking to the oh, back end, that's and he a big rips it. Mike Mike Hood. 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 What wow. a good bid. Couldn't quite get there, and that's going to be another goal for oh, the Cannons Rapaki. right before the end of the first quarter. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Well, I can tell you what's coming playing. next. Seconds, it's Jakeem it Cole, Misha Freestarter versus Jacob Fairfax, and possibly Terrence Mitchell. This is going to be fun to watch at this buzzer beater. Still 12 seconds. They could easily go down the field in 12 seconds. That's very true. I'll have to get the cameras ready just in case, though. 
this is an exceptionally tall D-line for the Cannons. You can see Freestadter just towering over everybody, but Fairly is fairly tall himself. And ah, see what you did there. Right, see what I did there. And Keem Polk, probably 6'1", 6'2", and then you add that vertical. That man is almost 10 foot tall. I think Misha is actually kind of glad that Jock's playing on his team. He doesn't have to worry about what you know what Hunter Taylor did to him last year. A huge pull, but out of bounds. That's really not what you want right now, because now the disc's gonna be the time's gonna start when the disc is actually thrown, giving Raleigh a couple couple more yards here. Not only a couple more yards, but it gives them a lot more time as they have to set up their offense and kind of get everybody in position for this last heave. Noah Saul with the disc, he's got 12 seconds to try to maneuver it down the field and find one of his compatriots in red. Hammer, Hammer finding Ben Dieter. Dieter. Dieter to Mr. Nethercut. To Bode. Three. Whoa. Oh, throw by Matt Bode. And that one will be a buzzer beater as the first quarter comes to an end here. Ben Dieter with the final Great goal of the half. Flyers. We've got a 7-4 seven lead, lead seven for the Raleigh four. Flyers. I'm going to step away and we'll be back once the second quarter begins. All right, welcome back. Cardinal Gibbons, Raleigh right, Flyers, Flyers, Jacksonville Cannons. Raleigh up seven to four after the first quarter, and it was a really exciting first quarter. We saw a lot of goals from a lot of different players on Raleigh. Justin Allen with two, Terrence Mitchell throwing a couple. Fairfax has two goals himself. Uh, Matt Bode throwing an end of the quarter buzzer beater hammer to Fairfax. Just really, really exciting. Jacksonville, on the other hand, having a lot of unforced errors. You know, a couple drops, throwaways, very uncharacteristic. Flyers coming in on offense here. Let's see, after this Travellini pull, what they can do. Nuts gonna catch the disc and throw to Saul. Saul on the sideline, looks to the middle of the field, throws to Dieter, and Dieter looks downfield to Justin Allen, who makes a deep cut, cuts back under. Saul back in the middle of the field, swings it to Justin. Justin looks deep at Mike Bode, and he's going to shoot it. And Bode's going to run that one down. What well done, Matt Bode. Nice job, Bode. Bode with back-to-back -back points, and that is an assist and a goal for him. Just really, really great from Matt Bode right there. He's able to beat his defender deep and just runs right past him. And right there, able to really do some really good uh, offense right there. With I mean, Justin Allen, make, like you said, he made that deep cut, didn't get it, worked back to the break side, and was able to unleash that backhand huck to Bode, a perfect one-inch stride. Bode was able to beat his defender All to right, the spot. Flyers, let's start this quarter it really off was the same a nice way throw. we did last time. Let's get a break. 
It's interesting to see Justin Allen with a backhand. I feel like okay. those are a little bit more rare than the flicks are. Matsuka throwing his hat off. As the Flyers get ready to pull, they're on defense. Hartzog with the disc. I'm sure why Matsuka isn't allowed to wear his hat. It looks like two of his teammates right now are wearing it. Maybe it's a different hat. Hmm. That's AUDL rules right there. Hartzog with the pull. It's a nice floaty backhand. Oh, and it's just going to dip out of bounds right there at about the 20 Let's yard line. Let's step it up. Catching some flack from the PA guy. Let's see if he can get it back. He's marking up on Cole Sullivan right now. Mike Pannoni guarding Fairley. Downfield, we have Goff on Catrone. And Matsuka guarding Lay. Lay with a disc. Looking, looking. Oh, oh my goodness, what a bid by Hartzog. Almost gets there on Sullivan, but not quite. Sullivan swings it back to Lay. The Flyers are moving the cannons backwards, which is definitely what you want. Rapaski with the disc now over to Lay. Lay. Opts to not throw it to Sullivan, but Sullivan cuts back, and there it is. Once again, not really gaining any ground. Put himself on the foreside. Oh, he's looking for a deep shot. And he's going to rip that deep shot. A backhand way across the field. And it looks like McKelvey's able to bring it down, finding Huston. Huston with his fourth goal for the Cannons after that giant, oh, giant oh, throw oh. from Cole Sullivan. I don't know if you saw what Hartzog did there, but Hartzog literally jumped out of the way. I, I think he knows what can come, come out of that Cole Sullivan backhand. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you've ever caught one of those backhands across the chest before, man, those, those things are powerful. And Cole does not, you know, pull his punches, so to speak. He, he puts his whole body into that. I think he's almost inviting some contact there. Cannons with the... Took a little bit of time there, but once they were able to uh, get a little space for Sullivan, he took a rip. And that'll go ahead and get them back to 8-5 on the game. The Flyers on offense coming out with Goose Helton, Noah Saul, Mr. Nethercut, got Jacob Fairfax, Matt Bode, and Terrence Mitchell. Oh, yeah, and then, of course, Mr. Casey, who will catch the disc. Fakes to Nutt, then throws back to him. Nutt in the middle of the field, about the 20 yard line. Throws a backhand to Fairfax, being guarded by Polk. Mitchell with the disc. Fakes a backhand, and then he looks at Casey. Throws it back to Casey. Casey sitting in the middle of the field, looking, looking, looking. Throws a backhand rip. Oh, and this is going to be fun to watch, ladies Let's and See gentlemen. if Terrence Mitchell's going to elevate. You know he is. Yeah. Terrence Mitchell. What a goal a by Terrence goal, Mitchell. Fire. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is called bunnies. Let me tell you something. I don't know who James Corner is, but if he actually thought he had a play out jumping Terrence Mitchell there, that boy is wrong. He had no chance. Terrence Mitchell elevating. You, you think Terrence Mitchell is a 40 inch fur? Because I think he does. If not, it is like 38 and a half. <laughs> it might be 39 and a half. <laughs> Another quick goal by the Flyers there, though, and they are back up 9-5. to five. Not not the greatest throw from Casey right there. All right, Flyers, it wasn't the throw of the three. future that you'd like to see Mike on, D baby, advocate for, but it got to there. It and Terrence there. Mitchell was able to sky not one, but two defenders in that area. Yes, and when you're throwing to a Flyer of the future, oof, oof. oh boy. Raleigh coming on defense here and just down with the flick pull. Oof, he got a lot into that. Let's see if it'll stay in bounds. Got three quick goals here. Ooh. Only a minute and a half into the second quarter. Justin Allen pulls it out of bounds. It's another one. You better be careful. He might be uh, stripped of his pulling duty. Ha, ah, just kidding. We know that's not ever going to happen. It looks like Sullivan is going to start with the disc. And they're marking him backhand. That's, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> interesting to say the least. Yes. One of the guys with the best backhand in the league. You should definitely mark him backhand. Well, you never know. He might be inviting the deep shot, which could be all part of the strategy, Mr. CJ. Cole Sullivan working it back and forth with Bobby Lay right now. And 
You know, I have to say, a big difference between the first quarter and the second quarter I've noticed is that both teams sort of have just kind of sat in their groove, and they've just been trying to find their cuts, trying to find their throws, and it's been nice, nice, crisp ultimate. Sullivan finding a hammer over top to Catrone, back to Lay. Lay looking for Sullivan and unreally able to break that mark. Oh, here comes a hammer. That's a wounded duck hammer, but it got there. It did. It took up a little bit of the rotation there at the end, and then a whoa, a huge flick break. Wow, all the way across the field. What a Mr. bullet! Fairly. Oh, Jacksonville. Central Florida standout Michael Fairley rips a full, well, I wouldn't say full field, but it was a full width flick across. Dustin Allen knew he wasn't able to get that near that Rapaski, one. But I can't see his number. Rapaski with the goal. Jacksonville down nine to six. Nine minutes and 33 seconds left in the second quarter. Nine six, another goal for the Cannons, and they're keeping it close here in the second quarter. Here we go, Flyers. Let's keep it up. Got the uh, Flyers offense, Matt Bode, Casey, Van Dieter, John Nethercutt, Terrence Mitchell, Jacob Fairfax, and Mr. Helton. I don't see Dave Snoke. He hasn't played since that uh, elbow or, ha you know, whatever happened to him on that Jock Polk uh, goal. But unfortunate for Dave Snoke. Hope he's all right. Looks like he might not be returning to this game tonight. Flyers that, therefore, are down a man, only playing with 19. And that's just not. not uh oh, not finding a very wide open Ben Dieter. Wow. Wow. Sengens was able to tr not only track Ben Dieter, but absolutely Mystery. run past him. I don't think I've ever seen that happen to Ben Dieter. And I, it looks like he kind of just mid read the disc there. He, he was kind of just head down sprinting and kind of looked up a little bit late as the puck trailed off to the right there. A rare misthrow, a misfire from. Nethercutt, let's see if he can get it back. Jakeem Polk with the disc. Let's see if they're just going to rip it again. He's going to throw it to Misha. Jock over. Jock is wide open right now, and I'm. Looks like Fairfax is letting him, keeping him under. He's still wide open right now, and this is this must be some sort of strategy because Fairfax is guarding nobody, and he's just sitting in the back They're looking right for now. a double team, but Jock's able to break that. He's not as bad as a oh, throw as you rip. think. And Fairfax. Uh-oh. Will Helton he get there? And Fairfax. Woo! What a play by Jacob Fairfax as he bounces through the roof to get that one. Yeah, Chris LaRock, good player, had no chance there. Helton over to Fairfax. Fairfax finding Nethercut. Dieter with the undercut. Oh, great cut there by Nethercut. Swinging it over the field to Terrence Mitchell. Ooh, Mitchell oh, Mitchell with a, a wayward throw right there. Unable to find Nethercut. Looks like it just caught on his wrist right as he was about to throw it. Jacksonville just daughter. working it up the field. Sinjins with the disc now. Finding Roney. Roney swinging it over to Sinjins. This would be a big break for the Cairns if they can get this. And, and it looks like, like they, they, will. they will. Chris LaRock with the goal from Andrew Roney. Nine to seven, seven minutes and 25 seconds. Goal, Chris. And that Goal. was huge for the Cannons' chances this game. They got to stay in this game somehow. I mean, they're going to have to take these shots and hope that Raleigh's going to, you know, mess up a little bit. Terrence Mitchell, not a great throw there from Nethercut. I mean, Nethercut's huck itself, not that great. I mean, he he could have hit Ben Dieter on that left side of the, of the field, ended up going right, to the man. right side. Sinjins was able to... Show some impressive tracking speed it was, on that. It was. Yeah, and that's that's two chances that the Flyers gave the Cannons that time, and they were able to take advantage of it on the second one. Now back to, to the Flyers O and the Jacksonville Cannons defense. Looks like Shane Sisko, Matt Bode, Goose Helton, Mr. Noah Saul, Justin Allen, Jonathan Nethercutt, and the man who is catching the disc, who we have not seen, oh. Mr. David Snoke. David Snoke, able to return to the game, thankfully. Oh, Justin Allen with a great in cut, then fake deep, and Helton will take a shot to Shane Sisko, who is going to bounce oh, in just a little. Just 
little misread by Shane there. Fioramonte with the D right there. Really unfortunate for Shane Sisko. Looked like he just jumped a hair too early. Fioramonte able to get the defense, uh, defense. And now Jacksonville's taking a timeout. They're going to go ahead and get their whole, their whole swap. Remember, in the AUDL, you can swap all of the people on the field with people that are off the field, putting your O-line on, making it easier, theoretically, for you to get a break. Yes, and that's huge. And I mean, if the Cannons can go ahead and capitalize on this, we're going to have a one-point game. But if the Flyers are able to get this back, then you've got the Cannons offense on the field against, you know, unless, unless Mr. Denardis changes his offense to defense as well, then it looks like he's actually going to do that. So we're going to have the Jacksonville offense versus the Flyers defense coming back after this timeout. How big is this if Jacksonville is able to convert this? Honestly, this would be a huge goal for Jacksonville. I really think that with this momentum, if they can get this break, that's two in a row. And they're looking strong, looking good. All right, fans, let's get it up for our D. It that is what the Flyers have done. They've switched their offense for defense, just as the Cannons have switched their defense for offense. It looks like Chris LaRock is picking up the disc right now, being guarded by Nate Goff. In the backfield, I see Bobby Lay and Brett Matsuka. Looks like Brett and Jeff Norgren are talking about what they want to do, setting up a bracket. And they will set up a bracket as Jeff switches on to Bobby Lay before the play has even started. Jeff will stay with Lay as Lay takes off after a great shot by LaRoque to Fairley. Fairley throws a backhand. Houston, Rooney's got it being guarded by Fairfax. Swings it back across the field. Hussin back to Roney. Roney over to Lay. Lay back to Roney. Roney finding Fairley. Another bid by Micah Hood. And Michael Fairley able to get the score Goal, for Michael the Jacksonville Fairley. Cannons. Looks like he faked out some fans there. Some fans almost got a disc, and they were like, no, you play for the Cannons, sir. We don't want that. Uh, that was a good old Cam Newton right there. <laughs> wow, that was, that was a big time. goal right, right there for the, the Cannons, as we talked about earlier, sponsor. putting them back within one of the Raleigh Flyers. With 6.37 left to go in the second quarter, Raleigh's going to have to see if they can uh, keep it going and pick back that offensive groove that they had earlier in the first quarter. What's wrong with Raleigh right now? They haven't scored in a couple points, a lot of errors. What do you think they need to happen right now for them? Well, right now I would look for, honestly, uh, I, I bet they're going to work it across the field a couple times and then look for a shot. They've got a powerful line out there right now, Ben Dieter. Justin Allen. It looks like Noah Saul is going to corral the disc, throws it to Snoke in the middle of the field, and Snoke is looking at Helton from the ISO and will throw it to him. And Helton throws it to Justin Allen. They've worked it up quite well already. 20 yards. Justin throws it to Saul, a dump throw. Saul looks. Oh, and he's going to. Oh, he looked at Nut there for a minute. Justin Allen back to Saul. Oh, he's doing there it. he does. Oh, oh, no. Not the look there. He didn't see Andrew Roney poach off. Another turnover for the Flyers, and that is three points in a row for the Flyers offense. Roney finding LaRoque. LaRoque being guarded by Bode. Ex-Jacksonville Cannon, Matt Bode guarding ex-Raleigh Flyer. Ooh, Ooh, a tip here from Ben Dieter. Yes, no, unfortunately, it's a contact throw. Ben Dieter committing the foul on Sengens. You could kind of hear that, TJ, Contact while we were flyer. sitting there. It, was, it either sounded like he hit the disc really hard or hit his hand really hard, and it looks like it was his hand. And that was a big... Sengens over to LaRoque. LaRoque finding free shotter. Sengens clear in the area. Big break for the Cans as they get the disc back. Over to oh. Roney. He's taking a shot for Jakeem Polk. And, yeah, John Nethercutt's not going to have that one in the air against Jakeem Polk, and that's a tie game, 9-9. Nine to nine. A great hammer finding Jakeem Polk. 5-14 left in the second quarter, and we have a tie ball game. All right, fans, let's help them stop this run. Come on, Flyers, let's go. The Flyers are really going to have to 
look internally here and kind of settle down their offense. They need to stop throwing hucks. And if they are going to throw a huck, it needs to be a 100% shot. Yeah, I'm not sure what Noah was really looking for there. I mean, first of all, to be honest, Noah didn't probably understand that Roni was poaching off, but also Noah was being guarded by Misha. So he's going to have to put that on a, in a spot where Misha can't make a play on it, which is obviously very difficult. He's a six foot seven monster, but he's not the slowest guy either. He can make up ground pretty well for a big guy. Gotta think that Raleigh needs to stop taking some shots right now and just grind the disc. And we'll have to see what they do here. Brian Casey to Noah Saul. Saul back to Casey. Casey to Helton. And Helton looks and he's gonna take oh, the shot. To, the Matt shot to Matt Bode. Bode. Matt Bode. Oh, oh! Takes a shot. It's a really big shot by Mark Schimmel Contact right there. Bode not very happy after the contact. I don't blame him, honestly. That was a really dangerous bid. But Matt Bode able to come down with it. He's able to hang on. He's got the disc in the middle of the field. He's going to look back in oh, and throws it man. to Mr. Fairfax. That was big for the Flyers. They needed that away, Raleigh, for the momentum. Keep the cannons at bay. And now with 440 left, they've got themselves back in the lead. Yeah, really dangerous bid right there, but good good understanding from Matt to keep himself in a level head, not really let that affect him too much. He was still looking after the play. He's not pretty happy about it, trying to get some right, teammates to calm him down a little bit. But really good response right there from Raleigh. Looks like Jacksonville had a three-break run of their own. Raleigh's able to finally stop the bleeding, put a Band-Aid on it. Let's see if they can go ahead and start a break train of their own. Check out it looks like they're going to have the A squad on the field here for defense. Brett Matsuka, Mr. Mike Pannoni, David Richardson, Danny Schmidt, Nathan Gaw, Shane Sisko, and Evan Howie with the pull. Evan Howie with the huge inside out. Down to Fairley, Fairley to Sullivan. Sullivan's got the disc in the middle of the field, throws it to Lay. They've got the disc already halfway up the field, the Cannons do, and only after three throws. Back across the field to Sullivan. Sullivan ooh, with a closing Pannoni. Gets it up the field again. Danny Schmidt. Oh, to pull Sullivan up the line, and they are going to work it all oh. the way up the line. Goal by the Cannons. Goal, oh, Jordan Huston. Mr. Huston is on fire that's, today. That's five goals for Jordan Huston. I think the Raleigh Flyers came in here game planning for Polk and Sullivan and Freestarter. Might have forgot about Huston. Huston, fifth, fifth goal tonight from Sullivan. Somebody might need to check that man's hands. He might have some glue on there or something. 10-10, 4-12, second quarter. It's a pretty good game so far. It's enjoyable. I mean, to the neutral party, you've got two runs by two teams. Raleigh in the first quarter, Jacksonville in the second. We talked about this. Teams come into Raleigh, they start kind of slow, minus maybe D.C., who came out pretty hard, and Dallas, who was kind of level but eventually started to wither away. Dal or Jacksonville now starting kind of slow, but it looks like they've woken up. We got a great game, four minutes and 12 seconds left. Nutt with the disc in the middle of the field, fakes a backhand. He's gonna look at Dieter. Dieter coming hard under, gets that backhand. Throws it back to Nutt in the middle of the field. Nutt throws a flick across the field to Ryan Casey. And Casey's, ooh, he looked at taking a shot deep. Holstered it, probably a good holster. Fairfax swinging it over to Dieter. Dieter looking for deep shot from Noah Saul, but opts for Helton instead. Helton being guarded by LaRoque. Nutt just ruining uh, Freestarter right now. Big man can't keep up with Nutt. Helton swinging it over to Bode. The Bode. Flyers are just working around like now nice and easy, and this is the type of offense we really needed to see from them. And a then a big hammer. A sneaky Jacob Fairfax is able to sneak over to the left side of the field, and then he right, gets a nice assist to Matt Bode there in the corner. Matt Bode, 
somebody you talked about earlier as playing for the Cannons is really having himself a quarter. All right, fans, we need another break. Let's get up for those Playing fires. offense and defense, I think, here. That's two goals and two assists for Matt Bode, and all of them have happened in the last 10 seconds of the first quarter and the, you know, the previous uh, nine minutes of the second quarter. So he's, he's stringing himself together, a cumulative good quarter. Let's see if that can carry the rest of the game. And once again, John Nethercutt, his hammers, 50 yards across the field, finding Fairfax. Fairfax able just to just throw a little dishy right Let's there to Matt Bode. Great response. Now we've got some good back and forth ultimate. Let's hope that we can continue this for the rest of the game. And back to that hammer, that's just, I mean, you cannot guard that. There's 53 yards of space that you have to cover. And if somebody can put a hammer like that into a pinpoint area, I mean, good luck. Big pull here. Zog running it down on Sullivan. Sullivan getting a double team from Micah Hood. Opts to throw it to Fairley. Fairley. Pick called. That's going to be a 10-yard penalty on the cannons right there. Contact, Jacksonville. Let's get up, fans. That is not what they wanted to start off that first offensive point here. Not at all. Fairley swinging it over to Sullivan. Sullivan. Swings it to Bobby Lay. He's got a streaking fairly. Ooh, oh, he, he chose not to throw it. There. Goff hounding oh, Catrone. Oh! Hartzog with a bid. It honestly did not look that dirty. He was okay, super play. close on that. Now they exchange a handshake afterwards. Looks like they both respected that bid there. Sullivan back with the disc. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. Turns back for the dump. Oh! A nice throw to Mr. Lay, who takes, takes a, a shot. shot. Let's see if Howie can catch up. I think Howie's going to get there. I don't know if that's going to stay in bounds, and it does not. It looks like the Cannons player. Wow. Got a foul. That's a call that's on fair. Evan Howie. Right. I'm not sure about that one. I really don't looked like, know. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure Rapaski might have initiated the contact that's what it there, but it like looks to me. like the refs here are going to say otherwise. He's going to, Rapaski's going to have it on the goal line here. And now the refs are going to talk about this. Refs time out. Maybe they are going to discuss who actually. No, it looks. No. I don't know what they're doing right now. It looks like Howie may have gotten injured, but he seems to be okay. You know, and going back to that throw, it really looked like Rapowski kind of initiated contact, like you said. I, I'm kind of surprised that they called that. Looked on like the he flyers. jumped into Howie's space there. I yeah. wish we had an instant replay where we could see that, but. Even so, Rapowski with the disc now, swinging it to Lay. Lay looking for the hammer, opts for the swing, and there is McKelvey for the goal. Lay to McKelvey, 11-11. Make a wish. Offense. One minute, 48 seconds left in the second quarter. What a game we have here. And this is, uh, this is quite a battle between these two teams. You've got the Canyons who have started a little slow, as you said, but they've just caught fire here recently, and they've been Battling blow for blow with the Flyers. We'll have to see if the Flyers can get another quick score here before the quarter comes to an end. And he's only got two assists tonight, but Bobby Lay is touching the disc every other throw, it seems. He's only got one turnover tonight, but, I mean, he's touching the disc so much, distributing for the Jacksonville Cannons. Honestly, that's why he was our player to watch for tonight. He's not, he's not, he's not making light of it. He's doing a great job out there. He really is. He's playing really well. and. I would be interested to see what his touch count is so far. As a huge backhand goes up by Travellini. Mm, Nut yep. tracks it down. He's going to take it. He's going to center it to Snoke. Snoke will give it to Saul. Saul's looking at Mitchell. Finds him. To the middle of the field. Mitchell looking at... Ooh, Mitchell looking around. Oh. Uh oh, here comes a huck from Nethercut. Uh oh, double gonna... coverage. Fairfax. Get up. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Jacob Fairfax, Fair ladies and gentlemen. That's what unbelievable. I, I, I'm i quite speechless. He had to make up steps there, at least five steps. Not only going to do that, but elevating over Bradley Simpson, who was the help defender. That wasn't even his guy. It really wasn't. And what an incredible play by Fairfax. It seemed like him having to catch up almost helped him as he was able to accelerate and then bounce. What a catch. And that was huge for the Raleigh Flyers. Unbelievable. 
unbelievable. I swear every single week here at Cardinal Gibbons, Jacob Fairfax is making catch like that after catch. Unbelievable. He is a pleasure to watch. And you know what? He's doing it tonight without Jack Williams. Can you imagine both of them on the field for Raleigh? Oh goodness, it's going to be scary. Raleigh with a deep, deep roster. And on that throw, Nutt, just knowing his receiver, just threw it up there into space. I don't even think he knew about Sinjin's poaching off there, but you know what? Sometimes, you know what they say? Better lucky than good, right? That's what well, they say. better lucky and have Jacob Fairfax on your team. Minute 19 left, Raleigh up 12 11. Sullivan with the disc. Looking for it. Tends to not throw it to Catron, being guarded by Richardson. Cisco hawking Mikel, or excuse me, Rapaski there. Rapaski throwing it to Fairley, being guarded by Pannoni. Fairly big, big, big man. Moving it to Bobby Lay. Throws it to Huston. Huston with the disc being guarded by Allen. Huston looking for opportunities. Finds it in Fairley. 45 seconds left. Bobby Lay and Danny Schmidt. Mono a mono. There's a call. It looks like a it looks like a pick. Picks being called. Pick. Ten Back yard penalty. 30 seconds left in the quarter and in the half, excuse me for that. Sullivan moving back to the disc, gets the swing from Lay. Jacksonville really taking their time with their throws as Sullivan, ooh, has a nice, oh, oh no, no. not a catch. Now is Mike like Denardis gonna. Patron caught it in the end. And he is, Coach Denardis is calling a timeout to try to get this break with 23 seconds left. Unfortunate for Catron, it looked like he had a play to make That's on the disc, but opted line. to try to milk it for yards. Ended up costing him possession right there. Very rare, Let's do it, Flyers. rare drop in sort of potential energy in and throwing it up there. And especially when the Flyers, I mean, the, excuse me, the Canyons had done such a good job so far just being nice and they were being super simple and slow and just working the disc around, doing exactly what you need to do when you've got a minute 10 left and you're trying to score a tying goal. Well, I don't think that that is going to haunt the Cannons. I feel like they're going to go ahead and get that back, especially Catrone. He's a great player. He'll end up making another play to sort of counteract for that. But could be the defining point in this half alone. We've got 23 seconds. Raleigh's going to put their offensive line on. Jacob Fairfax, Goose Helton, Justin Allen, Matt Bode, Brian Casey, Terrence Mitchell, and I believe, yes, of course, the man, the myth, the beard, John Nethercutt. This will be interesting to see if the Flyers can get a score here. That would really change the momentum going into half as it's been pretty evenly matched here in the second with Cannons maybe having a little bit of an edge. This would be big for the Flyers to take back control of the game going into halftime. It looks like, looks like Brian Casey picking up the disc. He's going to have 23 seconds to move it down the field and try to score. Nut being guarded by Misha Freestadter. Doing a good job. Maybe a little handsy there. Oh, wow. Great no D. No call. A late. No, it's a timeout call by Jacksonville. I thought it was a foul, but no foul at all. And that was quite the defense right there by Mr. Misha Freestadter. Able to use his big body. Not the greatest throw from Brian Casey there, unfortunately. He wasn't able to deliver it, but you know what? I think Misha did a great job. Uh, you know, he's a big guy. He was able to move laterally enough to prevent Nethercut from getting that space and using his monstrous vulture-like wingspan to knock that disc, uh, disc down. It really was, and he, Mr. Freestarter, did a great job of staying in front of Nut. Uh, Nut gave him a little dance in there, but wasn't able to shake him at all. And now, just like you said, CJ, Cannon's able to get the disc back, and this is going to be swing of momentum right back. In the cannon's favor. I hate to say it though. What I hate to say this because Raleigh time. tends to do this a lot. Heads up, but we're talking coming. about, you know, putting your offense on the field is great, but you also get a chance to have the defense set up. Maybe even Denardis should have not have taken his time out there. Maybe give his defense a chance to make a play or at right, least man, center the disc. The right at least center the disc before you call a timeout. That is an interesting thought there. We're well, we'll see how it pays off some for them. And have the cannons with 21 seconds left in the half. Looks like Chris LaRoque picking up the disc. Roney's back there as his dump. And I got Freestotter downfield with Sullivan and Catron, Huston and Lay. Lay at the back of the stack right now. Usually he's 
Look Much for a closer big to cut. the handler, so yeah, look for a big in-cut. Maybe to the break side, see if LaRock can throw it to him, giving him an opportunity to throw a break goal itself. Huston oh initiating. Huston gets space, but no throw goes up. Tight mark here, 15 seconds on the clock. Roney with the scuba. Oh, oh a Hardsog trying, but Sullivan, he's looking for the hammer. He points to the corner. There it is. There's a hammer. It's tailing out of bounds. Oh my goodness. And a and goal for the Cannons as he's able to tow the goal line and make Looks the like catch. Me, but goal Jacksonville. <laughs> well, with that goal, 12 to 12, Raleigh Flyers, Jacksonville Cannons tied up at halftime. We'll be back at the start of the third quarter. All right, fans, who wants to get the. Welcome back to the third quarter. Well, it's going to start in a couple minutes. Uh, CJ Colicchio here with Dan Schopler. We're here to break down what we saw in halftime. We saw the Raleigh Flyers and Jacksonville Cannons play to a 12-12 draw. The second half is going to be a barn burner, I can only imagine. But what were the keys to that first half for both teams? Well, I would have to say, uh, we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but the physicality for both teams was definitely evident. Uh, a couple plays on Rapowski and Howie, and then you had the D-Rich D down there on Farley to start the second quarter, I believe. So it's been quite a physical game like we expected it to. I guess both teams have really been uh, a little bit slower with the disc, more of a grinded-out offensive-type play style at least to start the game it'll be interesting to see if they open it up a little bit in the second half and uh, kind of open this scoring wide up with with Raleigh their successes came from grinding the disc as opposed to say the cannons who really opt for their handler movement between Bobby Lay and Cole Sullivan and at, especially at the end of the second quarter uh, Andrew Rooney they all were touching the disc a lot able to deliver some important assists for their team. Arguably, Bobby Lay touching the disc so much, so often. I think he'll be a very big contributor in this upcoming third quarter. But let's not talk about who the real star of that first 
half was a certain number 20 for the Raleigh Flyers, Jacob Fairfax, with one of the one greatest the skies half. that I have ever Fans seen. He loud, caught up five up. yards on his right defender away. and roofed him. It was an absolutely insane catch by Fairfax, but let's not forget about Huston over there on the Canyon side. He's got himself a game so far with five goals and it's uh, only the beginning of the third quarter. So well, looks like the teams are starting to send out their opening D and O squads. Remember, Raleigh started this game off with a break. They were actually up three at one point, and then Jacksonville chipped, chipped, right, chipped away well, at their lead. They really did, and uh, I think that's gonna have to be the key of the second half for the Cannons, is just take it one point at a time and just Keep trying to chip away at this Flyers momentum, Flyers confidence here. Well, Raleigh going to be pulling here, Justin Allen. Looks like he'll be accompanied by Mike Pannoni, Brett Matsuka, Micah Hood, Danny Schmidt, David Richardson, and Nate Goff. Jacksonville looking to take the first lead of the game for them. We'll counter them with Raposki, Houston, McKelvey, Sullivan, Catrone, Fairley, and Bobby Lay. Here we go, Flyers. Let's Here we go. Flyers. Rally Flyers, Jacksonville Cannons, third quarter. Let's see how this one plays out. It'll be interesting to see if Holt can make his presence felt in the second half. Wasn't really a big part of the first half other than his... Ooh, offsides on the Flyers. Not what they want to see there. Looks like maybe Nate Goff went a little too soon. Jacksonville will get the disc at the 50-yard line. Remember, this is not USAU where you get to restart. You get that one freebie. Nope, this is the professionals, folks. Bobby Lay uh, just unguarded. Probably should guard him. He still is not being guarded. Finally, Matsuka picks him up, and he swings it back across the field to Sullivan being guarded by the great white Micah Hood. Micah Hood back to Lay, and Lay's gonna take an outside in flick shot. Finding McKelvey, McKelvey on the doorstep, looking for the high release, Danny Schmidt setting that down. Matsuka on Lay, looks like Lay's looking to swing it. Find Sullivan, Sullivan back to a streaking Lay. Flick back to Sullivan, dishes immediately back to Lay. These two just nowhere to, oh wow, very big blade. D. Richardson oh, unable geez. to come down with it. Jacksonville takes the lead, 13 to 12. Oh, David Richardson, really athletic play of not only getting there, but avoiding the contact. Catrone, equally good as a catch right, right there. Let's get up for him. That was a very good catch by Catrone, and an interesting shot there by Lay, a sort of outside in flick to that corner. But I think the blade there is what allowed it to get to Catrone. Before Richardson could get there, I agree with you. So the first lead of the game for the Cannons, we're going to have to see if the Flyers can answer here with their stacked offensive line of Jonathan Nethercutt, Terrence Mitchell, Jacob Fairfax, Ben Dieter, Matt Bode, David Snoke, and one of the MVPs here in the auto, Mr. Helton himself. Two-time AUDL MVP, mind you. Nethercut with the disc. Pivoting, has a streaking Terrence Mitchell, scoovers it over Matt Bode's head and two Ben Dieter. And the ever-reliable Ben Dieter dishes it back to Nethercut. Nethercut being guarded by the monstrosis, or excuse me, monstrous Misha Freestarter. Terrence Mitchell with the disc. Roney guarding Bode, Bode and Bode. Bode. Oh, Bode opts not to a throw rare it. Rare holster by Matt Bode. Mr. He had Fairfax Bode. going deep and looked like he was going to take the shot, but decides not to. And now Terrence in the middle of the field with nobody guarding him. Still no mark. Terrence Mitchell. Uh oh. Oh, and a oh man, Terrence Mitchell didn't see Jakeem Polk and. Jakeem Polk getting a rare under D right there. They just kind of gravitated toward him. Jacksonville with the potential to break here. Terrence Mitchell going to probably opt to try to get it back. Oh, and Big sh shot. That will be a break for the Cannons. Another assist oh, for Roney, finding Bradley Singens for the Jacksonville break. Uh-oh, 14 to 12. Jacksonville Cannons 
over the Raleigh Flyers. 10 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And they look like they're just coming out firing right now. The Cannons look a little bit more upbeat. They've got a little bit more energy. You can kind of tell the sideline is getting really pumped up. And the, the Flyers are just kind of lax the day school. They're walking down the field. We'll have to see if they can kind of get this energy up and produce some goals here. You got to wonder what their halftime speeches were like. I'm sure the Jacksonville Cannons were like, we've got a chance to make a play. we got to come out assert ourselves and that's exactly what they've done in this beginning of the third quarter let's see if Raleigh can respond here and put some pressure on themselves remember ultimate is a game of runs just like in the NBA a team can be down a bunch but it doesn't matter if the other team can just overcome that adversity Noah Saul catching the pole centering to Byron Casey Helton underneath finding oh or overreaching boat oh and a D by looks like Mark Schimmel able to get a layout on the D, it looks like Brian Casey just overthrew Matt Bode there. Yeah, and it, Justin Allen almost had a chance at it, but Schimmel able to get that dish right before Justin could. Fioramonte on the, contact, has the dish right now. There's a contact foul, 10-yard penalty on the Flyers. Jacksonville looking to get a three-goal advantage on the Jacksonville Cannons. And the throw, keeping, they're keeping it on the side of the field, and it looks like there's another contact, call contact by Raleigh so the Cannons are going to get the disc in the middle of the end zone right near front the, of it. Right on the goal line looks like Andrew Carlton big big thrower here Let's see if he can just dish it and he and does he finding Brian Conklin. Oh, Brian Conklin. What? Very familiar to this area Brian Conklin so that must feel good for him to score against a lot of his former teammates one of them being Brian Casey who threw that wayward pass that Matt Bode was Really close to getting, unfortunately, unable to come up with. These are unforced errors that we saw from Jacksonville early in the first quarter. It is now turned. Jacksonville now cashing in on the Raleigh Flyers. Uh, their errors. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and that's that's three goals in a row for the Cannons. Is uh, Ryan Conklin looking like his younger brother Eric with that goal there in the end zone? We'll have to see if the Flyers can get a goal here. They really need to step it up and kind of take control of this game. They've got their offensive line on the field again. Helton, Mitchell, Nutt, Shane Sisko it looks like, Ben Geeter, Fairfax, and Mr. Snoke as he catches the disc and gives it to Nutt in the middle of the field. Oh, Nutt has a streaking Fairfax, decides not to throw it. Instead swings it to Helton, and Helton's gonna fake a backhand and has Mitchell streaking, oh, another Holster and ooh, hard bid there. Bradley Sinjin's known for his aggressive bids. Right there is an example of one. Jacob Fairfax able to calmly collect it, get the 10-yard penalty, move the disc, finding ooh, Terrence Mitchell. He's got Shane Sisko. Can it stay in? Oh yeah. Yes, it will, and that was huge for the Flyers as they climb back on. 15 to 13. And that was that was exactly what the doctor ordered. Mitchell with his second right, assist of the game, the finding Cisco for his first goal of the game. Raleigh stopping the bleeding, 15 to 13 Jacksonville, 8:48 left in the third quarter. Flyers are going to keep their defensive A team on the field. We'll have to see if Hartzog with the pull, yeah, they can get players. themselves a break. 8.48 left in the third quarter. 15-13, Jacksonville Cannons. This is going to be a good finish. I'm excited for the, all the viewers watching us on AODL.TV slash live. And a rip there by Hartzog as Fairley picks it up and will center it to Sullivan. Sullivan with the disc, throws a backhand to Lay. Lay being guarded by Matsuka. Takes a couple looks and then will throw a backhand up the field to McKelvey. McKelvey with the disc being guarded by Justin Allen. Throws it to Lay. Lay will look off Sullivan and throw a uh -oh. shot. Howie coming in. Oh, oh Evan Howie. What a D by Evan Howie. We both saw that a lot over the last two years for the Charlotte Express, but now he's playing for Raleigh. Evan Howie doing what he does best, getting another the D back for his team. Another bladey shot by Lay across the field. Those are, those are tough throws to make and complete. 
Just now with the bladey flick into Nate Goff. Nate Goff swinging to Micah Hood. The great white shark maybe looking for something big. Does find a hammer over to Heaven Howie. Swings it over to Justin Allen. No deep cut for Justin. My goodness. Oh, here comes Zog. Oh, he being guarded by it. Sullivan. Finds David Richardson underneath. Back to Justin. And Justin is going to take the shot to Micah Hood. Fairly tracking. I think Fairly's going to have a play on this. Micah one. Hood oh. with the catch. Oh, and the App State connection, oh. ladies and gentlemen. What a snag by the great white shark. We had the bucket ready. Let's Woo! Break it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a game. My goodness, my goodness. For the neutral party, the Raleigh Flyers and Jacksonville Cannons is never a dull game, but this one is especially, especially good. That time, seeing Micah Hood jump stupidly high over Michael Fairley, a behemoth himself. Yeah! Yes, it was, and it seems to be another case of sort of the disc kind of floating out there, and Michael right, was able to run onto one. it and bounce, kind of like let's Fairfax did defense, earlier, and that helped him get way up there. He attacked that disc like a on a fisherman's let's boat, go, hanging that hook, defense. and a great white shark just takes it out of the water. Micah Hood taking the disc out of the air. Noah Saul with the pull. Big tower and pull. It's like Roni. Nice Good lord, that man has some boosters. And just, just stopped on a dime. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Matt Bode. Huston with the disc being guarded by Nordgren. Bode guarding LaRoque as he swings it across the field. Mr. Catrone being guarded by Nutt. Back to LaRoque. LaRoque throws the outside and backhand. Noni streaking under. Roni with the disc, being guarded by Pannoni. Roni looking for Huston. Huston able to find it. Swings it over to Sullivan. Looks like Raleigh's forcing backhand here. But here comes, oh no, that's such a bad throw. Mike Pannoni eating that up. Great D, Pannoni. And here's a chance for Raleigh to get their breaks back that they needed. Matt Bode with the disc. Bode finding Danny Schmidt. I think that's the first touch for him tonight. Finds Bode, back to Saul. Over to Cisco, finding Pannoni. They're just working it here. I think that's what Jacksonville wants, but Norgren's able to get it from Pannoni. They're just working up the side. Let's see Danny Schmidt. He's running. Big oh hammer, goodness. finding Bode. Bode. Bode with the backhand. Nice pull Oh, no. Ball what? A wide open Shane Cisco. That's another break spike. And Shane with the kick spike. That Great is three in a row for the Flyers, and it is all tied up. What did I say? Not three minutes ago. It's a the game, game of, of runs. It's a game of runs, and we are seeing that right now. Let's keep it going, Flyers. And back to the Cannons. It looked like a kind of a another bladey throw. I I mean, they're just their flicks are not as on point as they need to be, and you can see the Flyers taking the advantage. Now Only they, one turnover there, and they're able to get the score. Unfortunately for Jacksonville, that's all it really takes. And when you have good teams in the ADL like Raleigh, one opportunity is all they'll actually need to do well to score to break to go on a three-point run Let's make it Jacksonville had all the run. energy I just think I just saw it transfer out of them and go back to Raleigh that's what it seems like Hartzog with the pull a really good backhand pull that one's gonna sit right in the middle of the end zone finding Roney Roney to LaRoque He's got a streak in Catrone. Looks like LaRoque's going to opt not for it, but he still throws a good 35 yard under. And Catrone's got Catrone Bobby wants White. to throw it. Takes Matsuka. Oh, he's going to get there. Whoa. Oh! What a catch by Lay. In a matchup of under six feet Let's tall people, break, break. Bobby Lay won. Matsuka none. And that was a quick answer by the Cannons right there. Able to. And Get another goal, and this has been quite the scoring Went third quarter, like ladies and gentlemen. It's a, rare, it's a rare huck by Catrone right there. You never see him really take it. He's usually the one catching the hucks, but there he saw a streaking Bobby Lay, and he decided, you know what, I'm going to throw this one. Might not have been the best throw in the world, but you know what, it worked. When you got a player like Bobby Lay, you can throw it to. Makes it a little bit easier. It does make it a little bit easier. Alrighty, let's see what we got here. We've got the Flyers coming out on offense. They've got their A-list lineup with Fairfax, Dieter, Mitchell, Nutt, Nat Bode, 
Snoke and Mr. Casey. Snoke with the disc centers it to Nut. Nut throws it to Dieter. Dieter on the far side of the field. Fakes the back end, throws it back to the middle to Snoke with the flick. Snoke is going to take the shot, and he's got a streaking Nut. Nut is going to get the disc. Oh, what a catch. Freestarter almost able to catch up, but not quite. Nut with the disc on the goal line and is able to find a Terrence Mitchell in the back of the end zone for a quick Flyers goal. Really great throw from Dave Snoke there. Unfortunately, he only gets the hockey assist because he just put it right on the goal line for John Nethercutt. Props to Misha for trying to run that one down. That's not a, it's not a fast, uh, or excuse me, not a slow throw there from Dave Snoke. And he was able to almost track it down. Great run by Misha. I think mm -hmm. he's got to be careful of, you know, pushing Nethercut downfield yeah, like that. You, to Very true. As you saw in the release, got super, super Flyers. low and was able to release that, which helped it kind of sail Flyers. out there. And it seemed like it was going to float just long enough for Free Shotter to catch up, but Nut able to make the grab and get the assist to Terrence Mitchell. Back tied, 16s. Let's get that turn, Flyers. What a game. Here comes Noah Saul this time with the pull, and it is a massive, massive floaty backhand. He's going to sit in the waiting hands of Fairley. Fairley could not even swing it to Sullivan on the first throw because of Mike Canone. He, what a quick, quick man. Sullivan tracks down the dump throw, takes his time, and finds a wide open McKelvey. McKelvey streaking deep and Bobby Lay is going to have a shot. And McKelvey, what a throw by Bobby Lay. What a point by McKelvey. And just like goal, that, McKelvey. Cannons are back up a goal. It's Bobby Lay equaling his totals of assists from the first half in, well, the third quarter. He's an important contributor for the Jacksonville Thank Cannons. You and you can see today. that Dennis on that throw. That was a nice. Day. Different third puck trajecting away from the defender. That's a textbook throw right there from Mr. Lay. So we got 17 16, 5 18 left in the third quarter. Raleigh is trying to regain this lead from Jacksonville. To do that, they're going to have to hold it here. And Jacksonville's been doing pretty good this half. I mean, it's still technically on serve. We saw two breaks from Jacksonville, and we saw two breaks from Raleigh. Back and forth. What an exciting game. Here's the pull. Noah Saul ready to receive. Noah's going to take that pull. And oh, my goodness. What a D by James Corner. LaRoque is going to pick it up, and he is going to dump it to Roney. Roney throws it to Freestarter, and it is a goal. What a D by the Cannons. And that was a quick, quick break right there. So, textbook lackadaisical effort right there from the Flyers. And that's, that's why, kids, you run down the pole. Not only does it kind of mess with the offense, you are able to get a D right on your own goal line. That's great because you can just pick it up and do what Roney did right there. Throw a completion to Misha and now they got their break back. 18 to 16, five minutes and four seconds. Raleigh looks a little, uh, a little shattered after that one. They do. They look a little flustered right now. A rare turnover, you don't see that very often. A throw right into the oncoming defender, and what a play by Mr. James. Exactly what the Cannons needed, and here comes their pull, a backhand by Travellini. Did you know that was Free Shotter's first goal of the game? Wow, that is oof. that's surprising considering that man scored about 100 of them last year. Dieter finding Helton. He's got Matt Bode going deep. He thought about it. Decides to throw it back to Nutt on the under, and Nutt will take a shot. Woo, that had some Bode. steam on it. It did. The way he released that, you could tell. Bode with the disc. Gives it back to Nutt. Nutt's looking. He finds Bode back in the middle field. Back to Nutt. Oh, he had Mitchell. Didn't decide to throw it. Decides to throw this to Casey, and Casey 
will throw it right back to Nut and Nut to I believe that is oh, Snoke in that the is Snoke. Assist to Nethercut. So a quick answer by the Flyers, 18-17, and Nut was the distributor on that back, drive as you saw Let's him get a good defense chain touch going. the disc a lot and also get the assist there to Mr. Snoke. Defense! Defense! So with four minutes, 25 seconds left in the third quarter, the Jacksonville Cannons still maintain a one-point lead, a break goal scored, uh, advantage, break goal advantage here for the Jacksonville Cannons. They have McKelvey, uh, Rapaski, looks like Travellini, Sullivan, Catrone, Fairley, and Huston on the line. No Bobby Lay. It's interesting. No Let's Bobby Lay. Teams, and you have to wonder... He's been touching the disc a lot. How tired is he? Justin Allen with the pull for the Flyers. Here we go. What a pull. And that pull uh, unfortunately went out of bounds. Cannons will start in the middle of the field. Sullivan with the disc, being guarded by Hartzog. What can they do without Bobby Lay on the field? That's the question. Sullivan swinging the disc over to Rapaski. Rapaski over to Travellini. Travellini inside to McKelvey. McKelvey swinging it over to Sullivan. Sullivan fakes the flick, and then he is going to... Oh, he fakes thought the back. Thought about the backhand, then thought about the hammer. Oh, a bit of a travel there. Ref's going to let that one not go. Sullivan, high Saul count. Can Howie get there? No, Travellini does. Right, Travellini with the disc. And the Canyons are being worked back, back, back. The Flyers are doing a really good job defensively right now. They're staying with their man. and Josh Hartzog hard is hawking Cole Sullivan right now. He is a junkyard dog, and he smells blood. Howie guarding Travellini. Schmidt. On Schmidt. McKelvey. McKelvey with an interesting move there to get the disc back. And a foul. Oh. McKelvey throws it, contact. but there is a contact called, and the Mike Pannoni D will not count. McKelvey will get the disc at the 35-yard line, and the Cannons will reset. McKelvey looking for Sullivan. Unable to get that as Hartzog. Sullivan throwing a really low grow throw to, yes. Guess who? Jordan Huston, his sixth goal of the night. What a throw there by Sullivan. He reached way down there and released that one. Thank you to way OG under the hand of Mr. Hartzog. And they are maintaining this two-point lead, the Cannons are. Lead. 2.59 left in the quarter, and we have some interesting information. It looks like Bobby Lay was actually getting treatment here on the sidelines, which was why he was not in that last point, but he seems to be okay. Just grabbing some water at the moment, talking to his teammates, but we'll have to keep an eye on that and see if he comes back out onto the field. It's unfortunate if he's able to, if he's unable to go. Jacksonville's other, uh, other players are going to have to step up, including uh, what we saw right there from Dustin Travellini. Yeah, I think Travellini is the one that switches to offense without lay on the field. He was looking like a pretty solid handler for those Cannons. And cannons with a huge pull. Looks like Alex Bullock with that pull. Dave Snoke skying the pull, finding Nethercut. The Beard finding Dieter. Dieter dishing it to Snoke. Ooh, power position for Snoke, and nobody was cutting deep for him. That's not what you want to do. Horizontal cut from Brian Casey being guarded by Conklin. Thought about the deep shot, but decides to dump it to Bode. Bode with the disc on the sideline, throws it up the line to Helton. Helton looking at the hammer, but instead throws the backhand to Ben Dieter, who makes his defender fall, by the way. What a cut by Ben Dieter. And another goal for the Flyers. Good answer there. Let's Good to see Bobby point. Lay joining the field again. Looks like he's okay. Looks like he only had to miss one point. We'll have to monitor that, though. Hopefully, you know, he doesn't get further injured or 
hurt from what happened before. It's true. If that's a nagging injury, that could affect his play the rest of the game. So 19-18, Jacksonville maintaining their one goal advantage over the Flyers. Two minutes and 27 seconds. Gonna have to start seeing some defensive pressure. Right, I haven't seen Raleigh really pressure Jacksonville. I saw some defensive pressure from, say, Zog, but not downfield defenders. Jacksonville is using their handlers a lot. It might be good for the Flyers to maybe try to push them up the field and get their better throwers without the disc. A backhand pull from Justin Allen. I did, it didn't go that far. He should stick to the flick. Sullivan with the disc in the middle of the field. Finding the aforementioned Bobby Lay. And it looks like the Flyers are going to throw up a double team. Goff and Hartzog, they're just sticking with the handler. As oh, Lay throws Jeff a Norgren. Float ball. And oh. Jeff Norgren with the D. Oh, oh Jeff Norgren, Norgren, the Teen Wolf. Oh. What a play by Jeff Norgren. Justin Allen's going to pick up the disc here. Cole Sullivan on the mark. He fakes the flick. High release, Gross finding Cisco. Cisco. Across the field to Richardson. Richardson fakes the flick and then will throw a flick to Nordgren. Nordgren to Hartzog. He's got Allen streaking horizontally, able to run past Sullivan. Let's see if we can see a hammer. Oh, did I? I think I called that. What a throw by Justin Allen. And finding a very special David Richardson. Newly married David Richardson. Congrats, David. Congrats, David. What a throw there by Justin. Looking like Jonathan Nethercutt with a full field. Full width. Full width. Full across the field. Absolutely. A 50-yard-plus hammer finding David Richardson for the break. And just like that, what do we have, CJ? We have a tie ball game. We're back on serve. We saw some good pressure there. Once again, though, it wasn't so much Jacksonville, or excuse me, Raleigh forcing the Ds there. Jacksonville is throwing it away. It's unforced errors. That's what there we saw from Raleigh. That's what we're seeing from Jacksonville. I haven't seen like a really awesome layout D yet. I haven't in it. I, it may be the way that the night plays out, but we'll have to see if somebody can get a sweet layout D and kind of change the momentum for their team. It's just been pretty even so far. It's a third quarter finishing up here. And it looks like that pull is going to flow Let's get that out of bounds. Going, it's a lot of out of bounds pulls for the Flyers tonight. I hope that doesn't mean that the, the they're going to be running a lot line. after this game. Although it does have a pretty good probability of meaning that. It's probably going to happen. It's, it's probably going to happen. So the cannons with the disc. Looks like the 30-yard line. Looks like LaRoque picking up for the cannons here, being guarded by Bode. Bobby Lay wide open in the flats. Being guarded by Matsuka. He fakes the shot to Fairley, dumps it back to LaRoque. And then LaRoque will send it back to him. Again, the Flyers are moving the cannons backwards here, and they're really doing a good job with their dumps. Everything downfield is kind of being guarded, and nobody's really open for the cannons. Bobby Lay and Ooh, Noah Saul looking for it, but Huston's able to get away from it. And over to Rapaski. Rapaski with the disc now, looking to swing it back to Bobby Lay. Bobby Lay able to catch it, looking to swing the disc again. Ooh, can Huston get there? He can with ease. Huston looking for it, pumps his offensive player away, but then throws it. Oh, nice, nice catch, catch by, by Roney. Right under Pannoni, and he fakes the hammer. He's going to throw a flick. Up the lines of Bobby Lay himself, and just like that, the Cannons are back in the lead. 20 to 19, 33 seconds left. This has been a very offensive quarter after a slow start to the game. A 12 12 halftime score. Almost a 16 point quarter here in the third. We've got a 15 points right now. And hopefully, the Flyers can get one more and tie it up before the fourth starts. I have to see what this offensive line can do. It's good to know that that's Andrew Roney's sixth assist of the night. He's quietly having himself a ball game. When you have players like Bobby Lay to throw to, it does make it easy. It's a recipe for disaster. And Bobby Lay, as he walks off the field right now, really is limping, actually. Yeah, he's wincing. He is limping pretty bad. His right ankle, it looks like. But a competitor 
I doubt he comes off the field for the rest of the game. Big pull here by Bullock. Looks like the Flyers are going to receive. Nethercut picking up the disc. And that's going to take his time. Finds Justin Allen on the far side. Stack's going to move. Oh, Justin's going to have a oh, Ben Dieter streaking wide open, but no throw. Back to the middle and then across the field to Helton. Helton's Helton hucking it to Terrence Mitchell. Shot. He's got Michael Mitchell. Fioramonte. Jock Polk. Oh, oh, my goodness. What? Terrence a Mitchell, ladies and gentlemen. Grab. Let's get up, man. What a grab, Terrence. Wow. Fioramonte is pretty upset right now, but I don't think he that understands that J his own partner yeah, in crime, Jock Polk, is actually the one who hit him. But he's pretty mad. He thinks he deserves a foul. Terrence Mitchell just elevated over both of them. Wow. Incredible. What plays we're seeing in the air tonight from Jacob Fairfax and Terrence Mitchell. Unbelievable. 20 to 20, 10 seconds left. Expect to see a very tall line here from Jacksonville. I see Misha out there. I see Catrone. I see Sullivan. I see Fairley. This is going to be a big, big line for the Tannins. If Raleigh can hold Let's them away from the goal line here, it's important because they receive the disc in the fourth quarter, putting them on offense getting them that kind of break that they're going to need. So let's see if they can go ahead. We've seen two buzzer beaters here. Let's Arnsog see if we can see a third one. Pull. Very floaty backhand. It's going to barely oh. slip out of That's bounds. not what you want to see with 10 seconds Again, left. Again, the Raleigh Flyers are giving the Cannons time to sort of figure out their offense and get a play lined up here for the last couple seconds of this quarter. We're going to have LaRoque with the disc being guarded by Norgren. He's going to throw it to a wide open oh. by Lay. Hartzog oh, almost boy. catches up. Lay Here really it is. throws, and this is going to be fun. Let's see. Oh, oh, my goodness. What a catch. Fairly with the uh, catch. Michael, Michael Fairly, a throw from Bobby Lay. And, wow, the Jacksonville Cannons are playing really well right now. Up a goal All as right, we fans, go into the fourth the quarter. And we will Come be right the back after these short messages. Well, after that exciting end to the third quarter, the Jacksonville Cannons lead 21 to 20 after Michael Fairley skied, well, two teams really to come down with that disc. He wanted his mother to say that he wanted, uh, excuse me, Michael Fairley wanted his mom to know that he says hi. It's adorable, really. Glad to see Michael Fairley, you know, being a good great son. Toss, Especially after Twitter that great catch. Hope mom is watching. Pie. And hope everybody else is gonna watch the rest of this game. We've got Quite the game here entering the fourth quarter, 20 to 21, Jacksonville Cannons. And if you had told me at the start of the game that the Cannons were going to be up to start the third quarter, I'm not sure if I would have believed you. They call this the greatest rivalry in the South, and perhaps the greatest rivalry in the AUDL. We can see why. Definitely Closely can. competitive game. Let's see how this last 12 minutes plays out. Remember that two weeks ago, this went down to a buzzer beater when Jacob Mao was able to reel in a last second throw from Goose Helton to give the Raleigh Flyers a victory. And another really interesting part about this fourth quarter is going to be what will happen with the points. As you saw, 12 points by both teams in the first half and then a 17-point explosion combined there in the third quarter. So 
Let's see if the fourth quarter has the same type of fireworks as Mr. Nut is going to take the disc and center it to Snoke. Snoke is looking around and Nut is taking off. Snoke to Helton, back to Nut on the 40-yard line. Nut looks around and throws his patented uh -oh. hammer to Fairfax, wide open on the sideline. He throws it up the sideline to Helton. Helton at about half field throws a backhand to Fairfax. Fairfax back around to Matt Bode. Bode with the disc. Swings it to Snoke. Snoke back to Mitchell. Mitchell looking at Bode, but doesn't take the shot. Oh. A late call here. Yeah, it looks like Sh Schimmel was a little too aggressive with Matt Bode. And you got to remember that that's the one that's the, we, call, we saw that contact earlier on the bid. Bode has been pretty unhappy with Schimmel's uh, contact in this game. Ten yard penalty on the cannons. Mitchell with the disc. Swings it to Snoke. Fairfax streaking across. He finds Mitchell instead. Terrence Mitchell with the disc. Deep. Swings it back to Bode. Another Bode heavy contact on the mark. Really heavy contact. They're probably, oh, Bode with a shot. Probably a stall six or seven to Brian Casey. Casey. What a catch by nice Brian, grab, Casey. Brian Casey. The Flyers. Little attitude on the spike on Travellini right there, but Brian Casey just muscling out the defender. Travellini, Raleigh able to score. Looks like a stall six huck there from Matt Bode, able to reel it in, save his thrower. That was quite a catch. 21 21, 10 42 left to go. Which team is going to have more in the tank as we come down the final stretch? All right, fans, let's get up to the defense That's here. really going to be the let's question. Let's get a break. Let's get back Both on teams top have rally. played pretty physical, but not too out of it. There hasn't been anything crazy that's happened. It'll be interesting to see what the Flyers are going to do here on defense. Let's see if we can see a, a layout D for the first time all game. I, I feel like this is just a really, you know, no Hunter Taylor, no layout Ds. It's just kind of sad. But let's see. <laughs> Sullivan with the disc. He's got LaRoque underneath, but he's shut down by Norgren. But Norgren took, the, took his foot off the gas for a second, allowed LaRoque to get open. LaRoque over to Lay. Lay pump fakes and then says, you know what, just kidding. Here you go, Sullivan. You can have it. But then Lay gets it back. He's got LaRoque underneath, opts for Sullivan. Sullivan finds LaRoque. LaRoque inside to Roney. Roney pump faking, gets Lay out of there. Finds Sullivan, he's just able to get inside the barrier. Cisco guarding Roney, Roney with the disc now. And the downfield cutters for Jacksonville look a little tired. The handlers are having to do a lot to get open. Bobby Lay with the disc. Nice he's shimmy to get away from Matsuka there. Looking, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking, and he has to throw probably a five, six stall backhand to Sullivan. Sullivan with the backhand all the way across the field to Fairley. Fairley being guarded by Micah Hood. He's looking, he's looking, and he's going to throw it to Lay across the field back in the middle of Lay. Lay with the pump fake. Matsuka guarding him. It's high stall count, finding LaRoque. LaRoque being guarded by Norgren. LaRoque looking. Can't find somebody. Cisco on Roney. He's got Sullivan in the area. Inside. Oh, wow. What a throw. What a throw by Roney. Oh, For his Huston. seventh assist of the night, finding Huston for, I think, his seventh goal of the game. I think that is. And what a connection. They have been on fire tonight. 22 21 cannons. Fans, that went right under Cisco's. Away. The outstretched leg. Justin Allen just, just not quite able to catch up there. And the, the, game, the cannons are looking Pat, pretty strong down the finish Still here. You got to appreciate a thrower here. like Roney out there making some awesome step over, low release, uh, air bounce backhands, opening it to the break side. I mean, it's not like Cisco is giving them that throw. That's a hard throw. But he's just able to make it and therefore giving his team an, a chance to score that last throw perfectly placed to Huston. Pull here from Bullock. Looks like Brian Casey, who skied a defender for the last goal. 
is here now with the disc finding Nethercut. Nethercut has Bode with him. Dieter crossing into the area. Opts to throw it to Casey. He's got Fairfax moving the mark. Fairfax taking off deep. Oh, and Nutt thought about it, but opted to just pump fake it. Fairfax isn't being guarded right now, but it looks like he's just a little bit too deep. Jakeem Polk catching up with him. Now Mitchell. Helton with the disc, and he's going to look for the backhand and not take it. He throws it back to Mitchell. Mitchell with the disc. He's looking around. Throws it. Oh, he almost threw it back to Helton, but he will find Nutt, and Nutt has a streaking Ben Geeter. Oh, oh, it's probably better he didn't. He had, jo it. he had Joaquin Polk, and I don't, you know, be Dieter is fast, but I don't think he's going to be able to beat Jock in a foot race. I don't know. Ben Dieter back to John Nethercut, Nethercut to Helton, and the Flyers are just working it down now. Helton with the disc, he's taking his time, throws a scuba to Nut, Nut with the flick to Fairfax, and ladies and gentlemen, we've got a tie ball game, 22s. Nice grab, Fairfax. That was a little less highlight, really, for Fairfax, but another Flyers. goal. The Flyers are sticking with it here. Very clean, clean offensive possession. They worked it down the field. A lot for, of crisp throws. For another cut, that's his fifth assist of the game. And for Fairfax, that's his fifth goal of the game. Raleigh Flyers, 22. Jacksonville Cannons, 22. Eight minutes and 10 seconds remaining right, in the fourth quarter. This game smells like overtime. I feel like we're going to be seeing some free ultimate tonight. They're just, be nice? they're just two teams that are too evenly placed right now. They're playing each other very well, but to a point where the defenses aren't really doing loud, too man. much to try and test the other team. If we're seeing a turnover, we're seeing it because one team is having unforced errors. Big backhand pull from Justin Allen, and it does come back indoors. Hartzog sprinting down on the pull. Looks like the Flyers are playing a little bit of a junky Ooh. zone here. Sullivan in the middle of the field. Back to Bobby Lay. We've got Hartsaw, Goff, and Schmidt up in the front of the zone. And they're going to double team Roney right now. Roney back to Lay. Lay with a nice hammer to Sullivan. Wide open in the middle of the field. Sullivan looks and looks. No mark, but now Zog's on him. He's looking to get it back to, to Lay. Guarded by Danny Schmidt. Cisco in on LaRoque. LaRoque up to Fairley. They're just moving it up the field. Fairley to LaRoque back in the middle. LaRoque across the field back to Mr. Lay. He's wincing in pain again, but ankle must be really bothering him. The nines doing battle as Schmidt switches off onto LaRoque. And LaRoque back with the disc, looking up the sideline, decides to swing it back into the middle of the field to the lay. Flyers are really getting beat with their rounds right now. They got to throw a better mark on. Roney with the disc, looking for his eighth goal of the night. Excuse me, eighth assist of the night. Thought about throwing another break, but Blackjack's across the field. And he oh, here it comes. Flick. Not Finding quite to in, Sullivan. But Sullivan to Bobby Lay, and that will count. Goal, the Jacksonville Cannons. Nice and smooth, back into the end zone for a one-point lead. Earlier in the game, we talked about the Raleigh Flyers using the width of the fields efficiently. You saw right there that Jacksonville was able to move the disc efficiently from side to side, rack up some yards. Once again, a really good blade from Roney, finding Sullivan, and then able to deliver the goal to a streaking Bobby Lay. Jacksonville up 23-22. to like the Flyers are going to have Mr. Snoke, Mr. Bode, Mr. Nethercut, Mr. Helton, Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Dieter, and Mr. Fairfax, the big 2-0. Here come the Cannons with a big pull. That's going to float right to Mr. Snoke. Snoke will take it and center it to Nut. Nut with Freestotter on him. Throws a backhand to Helton, and Helton has Mitchell Ooh. going deep, decides to holster it. Oh, but Snoke, Snoke will not, and Snoke takes the flick. What a catch by Mitchell. He turned on the boosters, caught up with the flick, and waltzed it into the end zone there. What a play.
You know, I feel sort of bad for McKelvey, but you know what? Terrence Mitchell is fast. He's also ridiculously athletic. You know, you, you can't expect a guy like that if you give him the, the deep and you've got Dave Snoke with the disc. It's, it, you might pretty much just start walking to the sidelines because it's, it's a goal. It's a goal for the Flyers. Yeah, and then you saw it with Nutt. He thought about it and then put it up 10 more yards. Snoke with a better the reason position, he did, better throw, and, and this, capitalize. All right, it's a good opportunity for any kids watching or college ultimate players. The reason why you don't throw that is because of the depth of the receiver. Because Nethercut was so far away from Terrence Mitchell, and Terrence had already made his deep cut, it was hard for him to throw the disc. But by advancing it up the field to Snoke, it not only got a little bit short of a throw, but it opened up the window for Snoke. And that's why the throw seemed to be so easy. Sullivan with the disc now. Finding Bobby Lay. Bobby Lay guarded by Matsuka. Uh-oh, Noah Saul coming in. Sullivan able to body himself away from Saul. Once again, the cannon's moving backwards. It seems to be a... But constant. here comes a big undercut. Looks like Roney. Here comes Howie. Roney delivering it. Oh, oh what great a great catch by, by Huston. Huston with the disc throws the flick up the field to Fairley. And Fairley, he's going to look, but not take the shot to Catrone. Throws the dump. Throws to through the Roney. contact to Roney over to Lay. to Lay. Lay back to Roney. Roney's taking his time being guarded by Howe. He's trying to find Lay, but Matsuka's playing incredible D, and he's going to throw it up the line. What a catch by Lay. A really good throw. Oh, and it's not a goal. No. Nope. Looks like it was just short. Head referee saying that it's not actually a goal. But so let's get, see if he can score it this time. Lay with the disc. He's looking. Swings it back around to Sullivan. Sullivan putting down a run. Oh. Ooh. And it will count as a goal. He was able to get the twinkle toes right there on the sideline with a diving oh, Evan Howie yeah. almost coming up with a D. It's an unfortunate bid by Evan Howie there. He's a great player, but unfortunately, he didn't have a real good play, and I think he's actually being assessed right now. Looks like the refs are going to give him a, might be giving him a foul for that. Coming off the field, Bobby Lay is limping super hard right now, but as we said earlier, not going to quit playing, and he has his team up a point with 5.13 left in the fourth quarter. The Flyers have their offense on the field. Matt Bode, David Snoke, John Nethercut, Ryan Casey, Terrence Mitchell, Goose Helton, and once again, Mr. Big 2-0. Jacob Fairfax. Travellini with the pull. Big towering pull. Is it going to stay in? It believe it will just stay in. Ooh, Gotta love right these AUDL sideline. fields, folks. They just have endless sidelines. Fairfax with the disc. Back to Casey. Casey looking deep to Bode. Centers it to Nutt. And Nutt with the backhand to Bode. A huge under right there. Bode looks at Terrence. Throws it off. And then Nutt. Oh, with a cheeky little scuba right there to get it to Terrence. Terrence takes his time, gets it to Casey. Casey's looking, and he will throw it oh, to Oh, beautiful Bode. throw. What a throw, oh, Brian Casey. Casey. Nice run, Bode. Matt Bode, the gorgeous cut. Under five minutes, fans. We got a tie game. We got to get a break here, Flyers. 24-24. Jacksonville on offense. Raleigh on defense. It's Matt Bode's seventh goal and assist of the game. And it's the incredible. Playing against his former team, the Jacksonville Cannons. 24 all, 441 left in the fourth quarter. Like I said, Shop, I'm really thinking this is going to be some free right, extra ultimate tonight. Going. It could be, and it Bucket. may come down to, Bring. as we've discussed Bucket. earlier, there has been no layout Ds at all throughout this entire game. So. If one team can go ahead and in these last five minutes get a huge D, then that may set it over the top Let's and allow them to get the W tonight. Justin Allen with the backhand pull. I really think he gave up on the flick. Too many out-of-bounds ones. That one was probably his best backhand Ooh. pull of the night. Fairly with a not very clean catch right there. 
Jeff runs past his defender. It looks like the Flyers are back in sort of a zone. Looking to Hard slow fog. down. Oh, oh, and if Micah Hood hadn't slipped there, he might have gotten it. But it looks like the Jacksonville Cannons are working up with Roney. Roney looking off. about it. He looked it off. Pump faked. Ops for Sullivan instead. Sullivan with the disc. Sullivan back to Lay. Lay looking back to Sullivan. We've seen this all night between these two. And it looks like they've got another cut by Roney. Roney with the disc. Under four back minutes left in the game. LaRoque taking a shot. Flick. And, oh. and the Mr. Goal. goal, Huston himself. That's eight for the night for Huston. That's incredible. He is having himself a game, ladies and gentlemen. 25 24. 353 left. It honestly may come down to whoever gets the ball last. If the Flyers can get the disc last and they can be at a tie game, then they will have a chance. But at this rate, they're going to need some defensive plays, and I don't know if anybody's going to step up and make that break for them. The Cannons are playing Chris Boltzmann, Huston with his eighth goal of the night. Rooney has seven assists, I think. Playing nice team frisbee. We talked about important people for the Cannons. You know, without Langdon, people are going to have to step up. And I think we've seen that from Rooney and Huston today. Definitely have, and if they're going to win, I would want to put my hands right with Lay, Huston, and Mr. Roney. Nut with the disc in the middle of the field. Being guarded by Freestatter. Helton now, and Helton sees a streaking deer. Ben he's going to take, take, take it. Oh, once again, Sinjin's coming in. And what a catch by Dieter. What a shot Great by grab, Helton. Dieter. Fans, we got a lot of highlights. Check out AUDL.TV for all those Helton highlights. Helton with the great backhand to a Come shrieking on, TV, Dieter. And that was one of the first really well executed deep shots that you've seen by the Flyers tonight. Got to, got to be so impressed with Sinjin's speed. He was able to track Ben Dieter. Once again, Dieter's not slow by any stretch of the imagination. But Sinjin's was able to track, just not come up with the kind of air he needed to elevate over Dieter. Dieter with really good position there. Yeah, a great throw by Let's Helton. Just Dieter again, putting the disc where only Dieter could get to now it. Let's get up the defense. Now their defense, as we've talked about, is going to have to make a statement, make a D. On, They're going to have to do something. We want a D. Nathan Gaw, D. Rich, Matt Bode. Noah Saul with the pull, Evan Howie, Mike Pannoni, and of course, Justin Allen. What can they do? They're going to need to shut Stop Bobby Lay cannons. down. That's, that's the key to it. If they can somehow push Bobby Lay down the field and get him from not touching the disc, that will make their jobs a lot easier. Evan Howie playing underneath, kind of doing what I was just talking about, playing underneath and denying, but Bobby Lay just making oh, it look easy. What a catch. Evan Howie's a great defender, pull and Bobby up. Lay just running right past him. Bobby again with the dump and looks to LaRoque. Oh, being guarded Bode. by Bode. Ooh, Bode with a springy nice up on LaRoque. LaRoque able to come down with it. We got three minutes and change. Now three minutes exactly. And the Cannons are really struggling to have downfield cutters. The handlers are working, 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 and everybody else downfield is just kind of watching. And now we've got Huston with a great deep cut being guarded by Pannoni, though. Lay knows better than to throw Ooh. that. Oh, another up. rip from Roney. Will LaRoque get up? Oh, oh my goodness. What oh. a catch by LaRoque over Goff. And he's able to get it to Huston for his ninth goal of the game. 26-25. What a catch by LaRoque. What an amazing catch. Nate Goff is by far the tallest player on the Raleigh Flyers. And LaRoque, a couple inches short of them, just elevates right over Goff. That was the throw that they wanted. That's what Raleigh needed right there. They needed to get that so that Mike Denardis could have taken a timeout, maybe got his offensive players on the field. But LaRoque going up and above Nate Goff to make a sick sky, dishing it for the goal. Unbelievable from the Cannons, 26 to 25. That was quite a play. 
And once again, no Jeremy Langdon, but other people are stepping up and playing incredibly for the Cannons. Travellini with a huge backhand pull. It's going to float down to Nutt. Nutt's going to take it, swing it across the field to Brian Casey. 2.30 left in the game. Cannons up one. Snoke with the disc to Helton. Oh, he thought about taking a shot to Nutt. Nutt back under, and he's got Brian Casey. Oh, Brian Casey was cutting deep, and now he's got Dieter around. Dieter looking for Helton, and he will throw it to him. Helton at about midfield. Oh, takes the Helton shot. taking the shot to Snoke. Uh, Looks oh. like Corner is going to try to make a play on it, but Snoke is just going to easily collect this. Oh, the 360 layup. Nice I bet he could have dunked nice it if he wanted to. Snoke. Probably if he wanted to. That man's a former Division I soccer player. It He's quite the athlete. Two minutes. We need Probably the depth break. perception from being hit in the eye was a little off. 26-26, 2.05 to go in the quarter, in the game. Or will it be? All right, fans, will we have pass, overtime? We get a turn in under 15. I would say we, we should get ready to stay here. But then again, we saw That's three wild. buzzer beaters. That's true. We have. If I see a tie game with 10 seconds left and Jacksonville's getting the disc, that's going to be. I feel like we're going to stay here. Story. Here we go. Two minutes left. I can't hear you, fans. 26 26. Jacksonville Cannons versus the Raleigh Flyers. Saturday night. What more could you ask for? Let's see how it finishes. Fairly to Sullivan. Sullivan to who else? Bobby Lay. Bobby Lay. To LaRoque, and no one with well, the Flyers is really playing guarding anybody. Rooney thought about throwing a deep to Fairley. Fairley cuts back under Sullivan with the disc. Back to Rooney. Being guarded by Justin. Over to Fairley. Fairley with the disc now. Moving it over. Justin Allen stopping Rooney from throwing. Throws a scooper instead over to Bobby Lay. Lay able to get there. Oh, oh Lay calls a timeout. Nice. Minute 32. Lay and calls a timeout. Like could have Time had out, a flick shot there to Fairly. Had Micah turn the other way, but a timeout called, and the Cannons are going to have to see if they can get some strategy here and get this one punched in before they give the disc backs to the Flyers. So there's a minute 30 left here, CJ. 26 26. Cannons with the disc at about the 40 yard line. I mean, what do you what do you think is going to happen here? Honestly, I think Lay is going to look for something here, try to move it to Sullivan. Kind of, they, if I'm if I'm Jacksonville right now, I'm trying. I'm in a comfortable spot. I have 40, th excuse me, 30 yards until the goal. I've got a minute 30. I want to take as much time off the clock before we score to deny Raleigh the ability to have an easy walk down the field like they've been able to do. I agree. If with I that. score right now, I'm giving them over a minute. Okay, so that's a good timeout by Lake because he's able to take some time off the clock, maybe move the disc. Think about how much time with Lay and Sullivan and now Roney picking up the disc. These good throwers. Raleigh has not been able to shut these throwers down. Okay, we've talked about Let's a game up, judging by unforced Defense. errors. I have seen Defense. very few forced errors. And maybe we're going to see one here with this double team with Roney being guarded by Goff and Hartzog. It'll be interesting to see if the Cannons try and get a quick two for one here or if they kind of do what you were talking about, CJ, and kind of let the clock run and a fake right there. Lay is able to keep it in bounds. Those little feet help right there, able to toe tap. Hartzog and Goff back to Roney, and Roney thought about the hammer to Fairley, but he holsters it. He's looking around, finds Huston with a grab. What a grab by Huston right on the goal line. Right in front of Justin Allen. Oh, oh and it's a turn. Goodness. Oh, no, Roney with a minute Roney. left. Mike D, does he call a timeout here? He's got Jonathan Nethercutt no. picking up the disc here. No timeout needed. Jonathan Nethercutt, Matt Bode. Bode finding Norgren back to Bode. Look for Bode Justin to Allen. Allen to take over here. He's got Zog going Oh, deep. he's going to take the shot. And yes, he will. Ladies and gentlemen, LaRogue versus Nutt. Oh, Jonathan Nethercutt. With what a catch! Left. Oh my goodness, and LaRoque is still Wait, down. It looks like he's cramping. But what a catch by Jonathan Nethercutt. What a throw by Justin Allen. 
you kind of thought that he might take that shot. And the Flyers getting exactly what they needed. A goal, 27-26. They were able to get the D right on the goal line. But once again, CJ, an unforced error, it seems. As I'm the telling cannons you. just dropped the disc. Right on their goal line. Roney, who has done so well tonight, unfortunately committing an unforced error at the absolute worst time. But you know what? This is kind of feeding into Jacksonville. You know why? Yeah, whatever. Raleigh kind of got this, you know, this break with 40 seconds left. Think about who has had the last two buzzer beaters, the Cannons. They have 40 seconds. You can't count them out at a time like this. So here's my question. Do you, as the Cannons, try and get one goal here? Or do you score as quickly as possible? Trying to get the goal and then maybe give the Flyers time to score. You absolutely score quick because where Raleigh can score fast, they can also turn the disc over fast. You on the cannons, if I'm the cannons coach, I'm telling them I don't care if you take one shot. You're you gotta make sure we're scoring. David Richardson coming real fast. Looks like he's gonna be marking up against Fairley. Saul has decided to play against Bobby Lay here. Misha. Underneath, they've got 30 seconds. And a hard bump there by Goff. No call, though. Interesting. They're letting them play a little bit. Bobby Lay now with the disc. 20 seconds left. You got 20 seconds to move Hudson the disc. wide open. He's got 15. They better start moving the disc. They're they going to be in some get, trouble. They need to get down there. And High the stall count. Are they got 10 coming. seconds. Oh, oh and what, what a, a catch. Grab. Six. Oh, a oh, backhand shot. Will it stay in bounds? Two. two. One. Oh, oh my goodness! And the Flyers! The Flyers oh, hang on! Oh wait, wait, wait! There may be a call! No, 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 that's it. I the think Flyers that's it. Flyers take the W. W. It looked like there might have been a strip Flyers call in the back of the end zone there, but the no call was made and wow, what a finish! by the Raleigh Flyers. An instant classic between these two teams. I swear every time the Flyers play the Cannons, there's some late night drama. This game, no different. Tonight, the Flyers take the victory, 27-26 over the Jacksonville Cannons. I'm CJ Colicchio here with Daniel Shopler. Folks, we'll hope to see you again, hopefully next week or the week after when the Flyers come back after their road trip from Nashville. The Flyers get the W over the Canyons. Huge win, keep their playoff hopes alive at home field advantage, and what a game. I'm Daniel Shopler. Just amazing. This has been CJ Colicchio. Thank you for joining us here at Cardinal Gibbons, and see you next time. Bye-bye.